Hey everyone, Linda from Barn Yarn here, and today I am dyeing yarn for my temperature blanket. And at this point, I've gathered up all the equipment and supplies I'm going to need and got them all organized and ready to use. prepared the yarn by adding reusable zip tie to each hank and then soaking it in plain water for at least a half an hour. This will not only wet the fibers, but it will push out air from between the fibers allowing the dye particles to bond in those areas more easily and more uniformly. While the yarn is soaking, I'm going to start mixing my first dyes. I'll be creating two turquoise dyes. One will be a half percent depth of shade, and the second will be a one percent depth of shade, making one dye twice as dark as the other. I do this by measuring dye powder out on the scale and then mixing it with plain water. Once the dye powder is fully dissolved, it's called a dye stock. I add the dye stock to the plain water I have in the dye pot and next I mix food grade citric acid with a bit of water. The dye I'm using bonds to the yarn fibers in an acidic environment, so the citric acid is the ingredient that makes the magic happen. I also want to control how this bond takes place, so I'm going to set the citric acid aside for later. I'm dyeing semi-solid colors today, so I'm going to add the yarn to the pot and coat the fibers with dye before adding the acid. Even though the dye is on the fibers at this point, it's not permanently bonded. It's just sort of laying on top of the fibers, but it gives me a great idea of the coverage I'm gonna get. And since there's no acid in the pot, I could probably rinse the yarn under the water right now and the dye would probably come right off. Although I've never really tried that. Maybe someday I will just for fun, but it seems like a shame to waste that dye. Anyway, I keep the yarn moving around in the pot just to get even coverage and once I like the coverage and the way the yarn looks, I will then add the citric acid to the pot. And once the acid is added, I will just return, well, I, I'll stir it up just to make sure we have an even mix and then I'll return the, uh, the yarn to the pot the bonds will start to take place and I'll move it around a little bit not really agitating roughly but just making sure that those bonds that I'm expecting are actually going to take place and you can even start to see in the bottom of the pot how the dye that remains once I lift the yarn up is actually starting to lighten up because so much of it is already bonding to the yarn okay that looks good and now the pot is ready to go on the heat just a gentle simmer to set the dye and create a permanent bond. And it's on to the next color. And now I just repeat the exact same process. Adding the dye and the dye stock into the pot. And then I will grab another skein of yarn and start swirling it around and, and mixing the color. I love actually dipping the dye into the dye pot and swirling it around. It's it's fun and I love to see the color develop on the fibers. There's just sort of something mesmerizing about the fibers floating around and swirling in the water. Oh, and I should probably mention that I'm using a DK weight wool in cashmere blend. Um, I'm actually betting this one for the website to offer up for sale at some point in, in the future. So far, it's a dream to work with. It's uh, very easy, taking up the dye very easily. It's just so pretty. I keep the yarn moving, but not too aggressively. Aggressive agitation will cause the yarn to fill, and we really don't want that. So, okay, now both are on the heat, and I check the temperature pretty often. I don't want the yarn to get too hot. Just a gentle simmer. 
and definitely no boiling. And just keep checking and giving it a nudge every now and again, not only checking the temperature, but just to see how much dye has actually bonded to the yarn, how much left how much we have left to exhaust in the pot. Okay, probably about 15, 20 minutes have passed and the water is really starting to cool. And this is looking like I can turn it off the heat and just let it cool down and come to room temperature. Okay, the yarn is cool and the dye is set. You see the water is clear, the dye is completely exhausted, so it's time to rinse the yarn. I could add some gentle wool wash or Dawn dish detergent. Is, well, that's pretty a pretty good option too, but this time I'm not adding any detergents. I'm just going to rinse in room temperature water. not to get too rough with it. I just let the water gently um, rinse all the strands all the way from the, the top of the skein all the way to the bottom and then I just give it a gentle squeeze. No rubbing or agitating. Just try to handle it really carefully. Wool can felt very easily when it's wet. Now I have a towel all spread out and ready to go. I'm just giving the yarn a shake to get any of, of the any of the strands that might be bent up in, in the in the hang from, from all the washing. We lay it out and let the towel absorb the extra water. And I just repeat the same thing for the next skein. These two both went on the heat pretty much the same time. The pots are the same size, and I'm dying one skein in each, so it works out that they're cool and ready to rinse at the same time. It's pretty convenient, so now I can dye all of the skeins in pairs. Now laying these two out next to each other, you can really see the difference between the 1% depth of shade turquoise and the half percent depth of shade, and they are just gorgeous. Now I just have to repeat this exact process for all of my planned colorways. It is way later and all the skeins are dyed and they came out so pretty, the camera doesn't do them justice. There's a slight sheen to the fibers from the wool and cashmere blend. It's just gorgeous. I'm gonna love this blanket. And now all I have to do is hang them to dry. Okay, so it's two days later and all the skeins are dry and twisted into hanks. They're ready to be wound into balls to become a temperature blanket. I, uh, I 
Hope you enjoyed seeing my process for dyeing a semi-solid color way. And thank you so much for joining me for this project. And until next time, happy yarning!